fiscal year runs from July 1 to June 30th. We're in fiscal year 10 right now, the end of 9, July 9, July 1, 09 through June 30th, 10. Um, and you see uh, we collected 4.4 uh, million in 7, 4.6 in 8. And with this proposed uh, 3.5 million increase, our local revenue would increase to 6.1 million. I want to say here, and the gentleman last night spoke to this better than I did, our, our tax assessor, but you may know that the state legislature froze property taxes to this valuations this year where they couldn't go up. What they didn't freeze is they can go down. And we had a few that go, went down to the tune of about 4.5 million on our digest in Manning County. What that means is we would have been in the position of having to raise taxes a small amount, even to maintain where we were the year before as our tax digest dropped this past year. So. All this increase is not this revenue, it is making up for some lost revenue due to our tax digest dropping in this, in this year. This is our budget, uh, school system budget, excluding the federal side of the budget uh, for the last three years. You see in 08, we had a $28.9 million budget in 09. We just ended, it was 30.8, but with the cuts that Mr. Fry instituted, and we continued through the end of the fiscal year, we understand our budget by $827,000 in 09. And then in 10, we had dropped our budget from 9, 1.4 million. But it's really more than that. Um, teachers did not get a raise this year. That's true. But we have a training and experience uh, step ladder in education. And if you teach another year, you get to move up on that ladder and make more money. Or if you get another degree, you get to move up and, and make more money. That was still in place. Um, that was passed on to us. So we had to absorb that, and it was cost the man county about $550,000. So after we absorbed that mandated, un unfunded raises, we still were able to reduce our budget for, from 9 to 10 by $1.4 million. Uh, this is where we've taken most of our lost revenue, and I want you to understand equalization. The reason I want you to understand equalization is because there is a carrot, even though it's a little bit sour, at the end of equalization. If we increase our millage rate, we start paying more of our fair share, as is determined by the state, they will reward us with more equalization money, theoretically. I say theoretically because we've been cutting. I'm going to ask Mr. Easy to speak to this, but we can, we could earn an additional $1,092,000 in this school year with this increase in tax, provided the governor doesn't slash it, the, the formula. And that's a, uh, a you know, I don't think it's a way with all of it. And if he doesn't touch it, then we then we'll be better off than we think we're going to be. But I've done that for about 100 school systems in the state. The land wealthiest counties, St. Simons, Ritz Carlton, the mountain communities, it's been about one or one and a half mills for those folks. The land poor counties, many of them in South Georgia, it's five and six mills. The poor are buried. The poor, not in terms of, of, of wealth, but in terms of the property value. The poor counties who can least afford to do this are the ones that are suffering the most because of legislative policy. <clears throat> Equalization is one of those items in 1985 that tried to address that. And they recognized that the state pays for part and the locals pay for part. But you know, your ability in, in, in this county, one mill raises about $100 per student. If you go up to the Ritz-Carlton, to Greene County, one mill raises about $800 per student. Now that means for them, 10 mills gets them $8,000 a student. For you folks, 10 mills gets you $1,000 a student. Now your children are no less valuable and Emmanuel than the children in those other counties. So the state said, that's not fair, and it's not. So what the state said is they are going to give you additional funds theoretically, to bring you up closer to where some of those wealthier counties are. And, and, and in essence, it works like this. They rank you 1 to 180. Green County's number one, land wealthy. And I forget, I think Pelham City is number 180. You're 167. You're way down here. They rank you there, here, and then they take a quarter of the way down, 46. Last year, Hancock, $155 per mill per student. That's adjusted. You folks are 72. The state will give you the difference 
They'll give you $83, $83 per mill, for every mill over five, $83 per mill per student. So you multiply your mills, in your case, everything over five, so it's six, times $85 times 4,000 students, and you get a big grant. Remember, the top 45 communities get nothing. This year, it's jumped to $93, the difference between you and that county. The governor decided to take that money to balance his budget. So instead of getting $3.3 million, you folks are getting $1.9 million. You lost almost a million dollars and a half because the governor wanted to balance his budget on that. Now, here's the sad part. Those 45 wealthiest counties, St. Simons Island, Reynolds Plantation, they don't get any money there. So they didn't have to share in that part of the budget cut. The poor, in terms of land, the poorest counties shouldered that, and that's what we're afraid is going to go forward. That fires me up because the children here are as important as the rest of those children, and, and you guys are bearing the brunt of that. That ought to be a legislative issue that we ought to be dealing with. Now, for every mill you go up, in addition to getting local money, the state, based on the governor's reduced formula, the state will give you an additional $300,000 more. So in essence, you're getting not just local money, but you're also leveraging it to get some significant amount of state money. Should be five hundred dollars more, but they'll give you $300,000 more for every mill you go up in additional state funding. So part of planning is to understand that process, that part of this is getting a whole lot of extra state money that we should have received anyways, but that's been, that's been cut. So that's what equalization is, and I'll be here later to, to talk to anybody about that. This is, these are, these are, this is, these are the millage rates. We went ahead and put the, the millage rates together across the state. Lowest mill to high, and this is just a fraction of them, and I don't know if you can see those, but the uh, lowest millage rate in the, in, the, in the state is Towns County, up in the mountains, second wealthiest land base in the state. Number two and three are city school systems. They're funded differently, so you can't compare. Gainesville City, 742, and Dalton City, 785, they have 100% assessment. So they're, in essence, at 20 mills because they're assessed differently. Union County, seventh wealthiest in the state. Raven County, third wealthiest in the state. Bullock. Bullock has a 1% sales tax that they can use to pay for other stuff. Only about four systems have that in Georgia. So they have a whole lot of other money that they don't have to assess on property taxes. That, no. There's actually eight systems, I think, grandfathered there eight? in. There's okay. eight systems in the state of Georgia grandfathered in that. That is not the splice money. That is a different thing that was once upon a time the legislature put out there. Several systems or counties used it, Bullock being one of them. It is now unconstitutional based on what the legislature did for a county to have a, uh, be able to vote to get a 1% sales tax for day-to-day -day operations diesel fuel, bus drivers, pavement, whatever. However, every time you or your children spend a dollar buy something in Bullock County, you're supporting the maintenance and operation. And I'm not telling you to spend, not spend money in Bullock County. I'm just telling you that every time you do, you're supporting their school system in being able to buy fuel, things that our abalone taxes pay for. They're one, they have a 1% tax that does that. And it's not a possibility to, at this point in time for any other system to get it. Can't do it now. And not to relate to this, but after Bullock, there's Dodge and Chattooga, comparable. Putnam, fifth wealthiest in the state, Lake County, uh, Long County, comparable, Green County, wealthiest in the state, and Johnson County. So you see, we've got a manual. And comparing to us at 11, you've got Johnson at 10, Long at 9.8, Chattooga at 9.7, and Dodge at uh, 9.75. Those are the only counties that are lower in terms of taxes, and Dodge went up two or two and a half mills this year, and most of the others are looking at it because of the state cuts. So you are at the bottom in terms of, of your tax rate uh, relative to all the rest of the school systems in the state.